all about the mixtape on a Thursday night with your girl Amy. Now here's what's coming up on the show. I catch up with superstar Marion, and then I get up close and personal with Apache Indians, so don't go nowhere. Hey everybody, welcome to the mixtape. And I have to start off by saying a lot of ladies are going to be envious of me right now. But I'm going to say ladies, don't hate, appreciate, because hey. I'm doing this for you. That's what's up. It's for you. And I have the sexy Thank you. superstar, Thank Marion, you. Hey, on you the doing? mixtape. Welcome. Awesome. So you're here in the UK? Yes. How's it feel? What's it like? What are you doing? Well, um, I'll first say that, you know, um, this is not my first time here, but this is my best time here. And uh, the reason why I say that is because, you know, I've been going out to, you know, various clubs and um, that's So you've been I doing the partying circuit, yeah? Well, yeah, but... The reason why I say like the clubs because see like back home the clubs are not the same you know um, and what I mean by that is culturally you know when people want to go out and have a good time we don't go and we don't go to the club you know where like, do you go well I don't particularly go to the club okay. I know people that go to the club but I'm saying like there's there's different types of scenes where you know maybe these type of people that listen to this type of music go you know like generally speaking everyone goes to the clubs here. Like, but that's how you guys have a good isn't time. Isn't it always good to go to a club in a different country, though? Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. But I mean, in like, you know, I see, like, I went, for instance, I went to an all Asian, like, or what you guys call it, like, Oriental club out here. And okay. they, yeah, and they listen to the same music that all the ethnic clubs, you know, go to. But then the ethnic club, you know, plays the same music that maybe the more, you know, um, commercial clubs? Yeah, you know, so like, it was good to see that the music, you know, the way the, the, the circle of music was out here, like, it's like the dubstep and then it's like the funky house. And then it's and you like, like, that? You like, I all love that? that. I love that. And I mean, like back home, it's not like that. It's like, you know, you have your like rock, group, you know, rock area. Yeah, yeah. And then you have like your hip hop area. And then you have like, you're not ever going to see a rock person at a hip hop club or you're never going to see a hip hop person at, you know, well, so. I guess we just have to put it down to, you know, UK, British people, we just know how to vibe. That's how it is. Yeah, yeah you can say that, definitely. So you agree with that, yeah? I do. So you're here doing some shows too. Yeah. So tell me about your fans here. What kind of love do you get from British fans compared to your US fans? Well, um, well, the love is the same. You know, the love is just, you know, open arm, you know, affectionate, you know. Um, I got to say that the British women are a little bit more vocally aggressive. Huh? Yeah, and I don't know if that has to do with the accent. Give me an example. Um, the word need is used a lot. Lead. Need. Need. Yeah, like you need, you know, you Amaria, you need to, you know, you need to, you know, like they're aggressive, you know. I don't mind that though. You like it? Well, I mean, it, it's cool sometimes. You know, Amaria, you need though. I yeah, yeah. I just want to try it. I just want to try a thing there, but. right? <laughs> but uh, you know, the the fans are awesome. The fans are, you know. They, they look good, they come out, you know, I say put your hands up and they put their hands up and they, I mean, you know, it's like, it's like the women all around the world, you know, they just want to have a good time. You're a proper ladies man, aren't you? You <laughs> love the ladies, I have to say, and the ladies love you too. Well, you know what, I, I grew up, um, you know, around all women, it was like hardly no men, and I'm, you know, the, the firstborn, so I got a lot of love, you know, from the women, so yeah, naturally, I think that. Because when you're performing, you invite ladies on stage too, don't you? Oh yeah, you? I do that. And they I love do that. that. Yeah. Oh, they, they love that. And do they that. take over the stage, or well, is it all about you? Well, sometimes they do, but you know, I like to leave a room. I like to leave a little room for, you know, like things spontaneously to happen. You know, like um, one time I was on stage, and you know, like it's this scene. Well, it's this part of the song where I'm singing to the lady, you know, and uh, sometimes, you know, I want to perform to them, they end up performing to me. So instead of me saying, like, you know, stop, you know, like, I just let them go. I guess we need to go to an Amarian show, because I, uh, I think we're missing oh, yeah. out. Yeah, it, it's, it's real fun. I, and I feel, too, also, you know, you want to you wanna let people feel like, you know, they want to be involved, you know, it's like a moment, you know. And I think sometimes people try to, you know, um, how can I say? They try to commercialize moments. You know, they try yeah, to yeah, yeah. 
you know, put moments together when really moments should just happen. So that's the reason why I, I leave that room. Like, I might see a girl that's in the crowd that's really energetic, so I'll pick her on purpose to see. I'm picking you because you're just jumping around too much. Yeah. Is, and that, when, is that how it is? And, and I want everybody else Ladies, to see. Ladies, jump around. When you're in the front row, <laughs> jump around. Right. And then I'll bring them on stage, and then something like really, like, okay, for instance, I did this show in Detroit. And, you know, I was performing. I had, like, a zip up on, but I had no shirt under. And literally while I was performing, like, this girl, like, grabbed, fully grabbed. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, on a high note, too. You know, I was like, uh, and, and, and she was just like, hey, I, and I looked at her like, <laughs> and I couldn't well, is say. Is that how you going on? Yeah, I couldn't say, like, because I was in mid-song, you know, so I couldn't say, hey, you know, I was just. I had to finish the lyric and then Did I looked at it. Did the note just go even higher than it was supposed to go or? Well, no, nah, no, nah, <laughs> I just was really surprised. I just was like, wow, she really just did that. Is that British? Is that here? Nah, the but US? I could, ima I could imagine though, because you know, the, the British girls are strong too. You know, they, proper, get over here, Mario. <laughs> so. so this show you love, but it's all good, right? Man, it's all positive, it's all good. It's all fun and good energy. So you dropped your album this year? Yeah. Oh, Illusions, yeah? Yes. Now, I have to say, every album's got an O in it. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, O really uh, signifies a lot. You know, not just my name, but it's, it's the circle of life. You know, and I think that I'm so happy that my mom named myself and my brother. And I think I'm going to keep the tradition going on with my kids with the O name because, I don't know, it's just something special about an O. And, um... The reason why I named the title of uh, this new, this current album, Illusion, is because, you know, there's always a misconception about entertainers in general. You know, no matter how many positive vibes, you know, you put out there. So what's the misconception? Well, I don't know. It's a lot of different ones, you know, when it comes to me, you know. Like sometimes when people see me, you know, like in public, they might, they, they feel like, you know, I might look different on TV than I look in person, you know. So I might say something a little bit rude or obnoxious and, you know, um, they might think I'm arrogant or they might think I'm cocky. They don't, they don't, I don't think that they really truly know who I am. And the only reason why I don't think that this it can happen with, you know, people that just come out or been in the game three years, I think it's, people like myself that's been in the game since I'm 14 and now you know in November I'll be 26 so I think people in their mind generally feel like they know me but because I've grown so much and yeah. you grow so much as a as a human being from 14 to 26 you know I think people kind of typecast you sometimes I think you know people have an idea like oh this is how you are it's almost like seeing a distant cousin and then when you see him and you haven't seen him in a couple of years and you might say something you know, that mm. they might not think you say, they might look at you like, oh my God, you know. Did like, you just say that? Yeah, you just say that. And it's like, well, you know, I just was, you know. So how do you feel when people have that misconception? Um, I mean, I don't feel any kind of way. The only, the only time I feel any kind of way is like when it has, to, you know, to do with negative stuff. That's the only time I feel actually like, like what, like where did that come from? You know, because I'm still a person and I feel you know, yeah. and I have, you know, emotions, and, you know, I might get pissed off, you know, so I may say something that I don't mean sometimes. Or when you're an artist, though, people forget that you are actually human, too. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Because you have, you have had, like, people have said things on blogs yeah. about, about you yeah. that have been negative. Yeah. And y when you read that, you must be like, oh, what? Well, I'm now numb now. I really don't care because at the end of the day, you know, they're not going to help me be successful or they're not going to contribute. And that's really how I look at it all. I look at it and I separate it. I look at the people that generally, you know, love my music and know me from my music and just watch me grow. And then I, I think about, you know, the bloggers, so to speak, you know, the people that really, it's their job to, to, to create negative, you know, things about artists in order to keep their blog popping. And, you know, to me, that's like, that's like a shame. That's like, that's almost like, you know, it's almost like sad. It's almost like, you know, having a food company and like feeding the homeless, but the government pays you. You know, it's, uh -huh. you yeah, know what I'm saying? I can see that. Yeah, it's, definitely. it's not like a real purpose. It's not like you're really contributing to, to you know, the 21st century or, or what we consider 
culture, you know? But saying that, you know, you've come to a point where you just don't care about it anymore, yeah. like the whole negativity and, you know, bloggers saying whatever and headlines. Yeah. But is that because you've been in the industry and you've grown in the industry and you've matured in the industry? Yeah. That's kind of given you that confidence to be like, you know what, I can shrug that off. Yeah, uh, I think, I think uh, the reason why I've been able to meet, like, to, to make it is because I can laugh, you know? You are always smiling, though, I have to say. I think we should change your name to Smiler. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that could work. S smiley on. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so being, you know, you said that you've been in the industry since you were 14. What's, what is the recipe for success, to be here so long? Well, honestly, um, I, I really give the credit to, you know, my team and my friends and family and, and really my mom, you know, because my mom was the single parent. And um, she had me at 16. And if you really think about how much a woman goes through without even being a woman, being able to raise a boy and have to, you know, help him understand what it's like to be a man and not be a man, you know, that's like difficult on top of having, you know, three other siblings and having to be a big brother too. So really I credit, I credit to my family foundation, my grandmother, you know, I was born at home, my grandmother birthed me. You know, so all of those little things uh, contributed to why, you know, I have, I have, you know, been happy to stay. So did you have other male role models around, like uncles? Oh, yeah. Well, ev well, eventually, eventually I did. But for the most part, no. It was real hard for me to respect men because, you know, I was, I was the oldest. So my thing was it, was, it was being protective. It was always like protect first, you know. So, so how do you feel now? Because you're a role model to younger younger boys out there, younger right. generation. So I, well, I feel like I feel like I feel like now this is the real this is the real time when I'm able to contribute, you know, to inspiring people and being responsible for it. Because you know, a lot of people like to detach themselves from the inspiration of what they do, and you know, it's like solely why you can change somebody's life. You might not want that responsibility, but that's what it is. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you're talking about. Some, somebody somewhere, if you're selling albums, if you ever sold a million albums, you're, you're inspiring them. See, you, you got point there, because there's a lot of artists, and they do say, they say, you know what, I don't see myself as a role model, but you know, if you're in the public eye, that is what you are, because yeah. kids look up to you. Yeah, you gotta be responsible for that. Whether you want that or not, that's what it is. I'm saying, like, Marilyn, Marilyn Manson, like, <laughs> everybody knows his name, regardless yeah. of what he does. There's still people that he caters to. So at the end of the day, if he says, hey, everybody, I'm gonna jump off a roof, jump with me, and, you know, a few people do, that he has to be responsible of course, for that. Yeah. He will be held accountable to it. Yeah. Okay, on that note, we're gonna take a break. So um, don't go nowhere, and we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> 